Well, good morning, everybody. I think we'll start. We'll start. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Cliff Allen. I'm Vice Chancellor of uh, the University, and it's great that you've uh, come to join us here at Birmingham City University this morning. Uh, what I'm going to do is give you a bit of an introduction to the university, uh, and hopefully give you a little bit of uh, some tips about how how to use the best of uh, of the day. Uh, and I, you know, I know what it's like where you're sat. Uh, a few years ago, I was doing similar things when my both my son and my daughter. Were, we're looking to go to university and uh, so I, I know it can be a bit of a daunting task going around different universities and trying to find out uh, so much information uh, but it's really important that you take your time uh, uh, because it really is crucial that the ma you make the right choice both in terms of the course you'd like to study and the type of university that you'd like to go to. And you do have a bit more time. You, you don't really need to kind of complete your choices, at least, or uh, by, by May, if you're thinking of coming in September 2013. And of course, some of you probably have already submitted your, your UCAS forms, or if you haven't yet, you've still got time to do that as well. Uh, it's really important that you do take your time because, of course, you know, going to university is a a life-changing experience so hopefully it will be and therefore you need to make sure that you're making your right choice and of course there are lots of different types of universities university like uh, universities like ours which are very much integrated parts of the city uh, scattered around different parts of the city or you have universities which are within contained campuses uh, so quite different environments, universities out of cities, universities in small towns, universities in big cities like Birmingham. Uh, so it's good getting a kind of a, a, variety, a range of uh, experiences in those, having a look to see what will meet your needs, what will fit best for you. Similarly as well, thinking about the type of course you would like to study. You know, would you want to go for a kind of conventional, straightforward academic a course or do you want something which is related to professions or something which is more vocational and more practical in orientation so again think about that uh, and finally also look very do come and sit down there's lots of lots of seats here uh, there's also courses uh, look, when you're looking at the courses look at look at how the course is actually taught uh, and what sort of uh, and what sort of uh, uh, approaches that the teaching and learning uh, is is undertaken on those courses because you may find that for the same subject it's taught in very different ways in different universities. So ask about how it's taught, how you're assessed, uh, what sort of uh, experiences you might have on those courses. Again, finding out what would uh, fit your interests the most. So use these opportunities to ask lots of questions, find out as much information as possible because making the right choice for you will certainly help you progress and to be successful as you go through your three or four years in, into higher education. Now, uh, say a little bit about Birmingham City. Well, our roots go back now 170 years as an institution when we were first formed by the uh, uh, Birmingham uh, College of Design back in 1843. And then we achieved university status in 1992, originally called University of Central England. And then we changed our name in 2007 to Birmingham City University because we wanted to kind of reflect uh, the pride we have in being part of this city and, the, and also demonstrating the connections we had with this city and that's why the name was changed. Uh, we have about 150 undergraduate courses and around 200 postgraduate masters uh, and PhD related uh, courses as well and there's quite a broad range we do a number of the traditional academic courses such as English sociology we have many professional courses such as law accountancy teacher ed teacher training uh, engineering uh, and then of course we have uh, more practically based courses around uh, or practice based courses such as music acting uh, design and then vocational courses, all of the vocations around business, criminology, uh, IT, those sorts of things. So we're very much kind of practical and professionally based in terms of our programmes. We're spread over six faculties. Uh, the faculties that are local, located on this campus uh, is English Law, Social Sciences, uh, in which uh, you'll find a lot of our activity in, in relation to those. And then the Business School is also on this campus with all of its uh, related professional and marketing and international business programmes as well. Uh, we also have a number of other sites in the city uh, where we're beginning to increasingly invest in relocation, some of 
relocating some of our activities into the city centre with a whole new £180 million building programme that's going on in the east side part of the city centre. Now the type of higher education you, would, you will receive in uh, our university, and it's a type of uni uh, education we're very proud of, it's very, about, it's very much focused on the workplace, it's very much focused on practice, it's very much uh, focused on the applied nature of knowledge. We believe in making sure that our courses are connected to the real world, that you're being prepared with the skills and the capabilities of moving quite quickly into employment. And that's where we're placing a great deal of focus on preparing you for the world of work, and that's uh, a lot to be said in terms of the connections we have with the world of work. So let me just say a little bit more about that because your learning is really why you're here or why you would come to a university and therefore it's important to kind of give you a description of some of the things that would happen when you're here. Firstly, uh, you know, you will experience some of what I believe are some of the finest facilities supporting your learning that I've seen in quite a number of universities and I've worked in quite a few as well. Uh, certainly, you know, that, that old kind of concept that you go to read for your degree, uh, there is a lot of that goes on and therefore we have some uh, fabulous IT and learning resource and library facilities and as students uh, here in Birmingham you'll also have access to the new Birmingham Central Library uh, which is a state-of-the-art facility which will be opening later this year right in the city centre. So as well as having libraries on all of our campuses we also have access to Birmingham Central Library which has the largest reference library uh, in Europe uh, again giving you access to all of that. Uh, like all universities of course you will you will learn in environments such as this, you will have lectures but you'll also have tutorials and you'll also have an, your own personal tutor as well who will guide you, who will uh, guide you through your studies, who will be advising you and in some ways will be mentoring you through your studies. So you do have quite a lot of one-to-one -one support uh, throughout your provision but a lot uh, of what you will be doing is also learning by doing, again focusing on the practical elements of uh, higher education. And so what we try to do is we try to create realistic learning environments which are almost like uh, the kind of environments in which you will work when you graduate. So for example if you're doing law we have uh, law courts which are you know, purposefully built to reenact what it's like to perform in court as a lawyer. In fact, they're often used uh, for, uh, for television and films themselves, such as the kind of realistic dimension of them. We also have labs, we have studios for media, we have a whole uh, a, a approach to recreating uh, what it's like to be operating within the work, working environment. Uh, and similarly, we're re re recreating the working environment virtually as well. And you'll find now that many universities have created what we call online learning environments where you have access to a lot of information and again virtualization of real world situations through IT and you'll be using a lot of that in your studies. And it's also the case that you'll be taught and lectured and supported and tutored by some very leading academic staff members, many of whom are doing uh, world leading research and practical application. And you'll find this university that many of our staff who will be uh, working with you uh, are actually also professionally involved. They're actually also working in part-time in professional practice as well. Uh, we believe it's really important that be we keep close to the changes that are happening in the workplace. So many of our uh, lecturers and our tutors are also, wor are also from the workplace who work with us and collaborate with us to ensure that you're uh, getting up-to-date knowledge of the working environment and the professional development. Moreover, we're constantly bringing in uh, people from the world of work to act as advisors and to be visiting lecturers, whether it's Nick Hornby, the author who comes in to uh, speak to our English students, to the advertising guru Trevor Beatty who comes in and talks to our um, uh, marketing students. All courses will have that input from some of the leading figures in their field. And you'll also find that many of our courses are accredited by 
professional bodies. We have over 50 courses which now are accredited by bodies. So that ensures that the design and the content of the course is directly, directly relevant to the profession that one may then uh, move into uh, working within. Uh, so those are the kind of key features about our, our learning. And we take very seriously the fact that we need to think about how to prepare you uh, in the best way possible for moving on to the next stage uh, of your lives and into the, work, uh, into the workplace. And therefore, you'll find here at Birmingham City University, there's a huge amount of emphasis on preparing you for employment, as well as providing you with the knowledge in the, in the broader depth uh, of skills of a higher education. Uh, and so ways in which we do that is by offering courses which enable you to take a work placement, often for a year, it's called a sandwich course, where you may spend your third year, uh, the whole year in work, or if not the full year, we may take half a year or a semester, so that you're actually experiencing a working environment related to the subject of your choice, and you're getting real world experience, and that is part of the course. And there it's becoming increasingly popular and we're designing more and more of our courses uh, to be in that way. So uh, you will find that many of our students then go on to work uh, on graduation for the very people that they've held their placement year with. We're also giving you the opportunity to study abroad or even work abroad as part of your course. You'll find that the working world that you'll be part of in the future will be increasingly an internationalised one. The world is getting smaller through to globalisation. You'll be working alongside, probably, people from different parts of the country. So what we want to give you through your university experience is exposure to that increasing international dimension. So through partners that we have, throughout Europe, throughout uh, Asia, the US, you have opportunities to spend some of your time studying abroad through our partners. The other thing that we've found, that if we, uh, if we provide opportunities for students of working here in the university, it is not only giving them the opportunity to earn money, while you study, but also it's giving the opportunity to broaden your skill base as well. So what we've done is we've set up a new scheme uh, whereby essentially we have a student employment agency where students are working part-time for the university doing a whole range of tasks, administration tasks, support staff tasks, working in the library, working in the sports centre, and we now have over a thousand students who are earning uh, money by working for the university and working up to 20 hours. So it's a good way of actually, uh, in some way, supplementing their income uh, to, to cover some of the costs of while they study. And we plan to increase those opportunities for, for student jobs in the university during your studies. The other thing we've found too is that many of our students are increasingly interested in becoming entrepreneurs in some way or form. In, uh, they've got great ideas about businesses that they want to set up. And so therefore we're beginning to encourage uh, our academic colleagues to design into the courses aspects of entrepreneurship. Uh, and also we have a lot of support activities to actually support those students who have ideas about setting up new enterprises, new business ideas and so on. And increasingly, we're finding more and more of our graduates moving out in the, into the world of work through setting up their own companies. We have something called the Concept fam, uh, Factory, which brings students together with their ideas, they're mentored. Uh, we have alumni who come in and share their ideas of how they've set up businesses in the past. Uh, we give them support for business startups, uh, incubation units to help those companies to, to proceed. And we're finding that's happening more and more as more and more young people become much more entrepreneurial in their thinking, in their styles. Nick, uh, if you go along to the mailbox, uh, the kind of big shopping area in, uh, in Birmingham, you'll find we have, a, we have the entrepreneur store there. Uh, which is uh, a shop, basically, uh, where many of our former students have gone on to set up various uh, uh, activities, and it's the shop enables them to sell much, uh, many of their products, mainly design-related and so on. So it's a kind of a, a direct relationship between studying and working. And you'll also have student uh, placement opportunities as well, uh, student uh, academic partnership opportunities, where students are working with academics to help uh, input new ways of learning and teaching, and they're paid to do that. So we find that there's many ways in which our students can actually uh, receive paid income while they're here in the university. Of course, we're very conscious 
of the fact that now the fees for, uni for university study are very different to what they have been in the past. And from this year, 2012, we've had to raise significantly the fees as a result of the government reducing the funding uh, to universities. Uh, now, what uh, we do, of course, is we recognise that this is a very big decision for you. Uh, it's a very much an investment decision as to whether you go to university. But I think the, because of the funding and finance situation. But I think what is really important to remember is that you don't pay up front any fee. Basically, you take a student fee loan, uh, which is funded through the government, uh, and then you only begin to repay that loan once you're in, your, once you're in work and once your salary is £21,000 or above. And you pay about 9% uh, on the income above £21,000. So if you're doing a start, starting a job around £21,000, £22,000, essentially your repayments for your loans work out at about £7 a week. Uh, it's written off after 30 years. If you stop working, you stop repaying. The more you earn, the more you repay through the loan system. It's probably the most generous uh, loan system you can get uh, at the moment. But more importantly, we believe that nevertheless, despite that uh, loan system and the cost uh, ultimately of going to higher education, we still believe it's a life-changing experience. The job opportunities that are offered are very significant. Uh, many uh, jobs, many professions such as nursing, law, psychology, they require a degree for entry into those professions. And according to the CBI, one in five jobs now in the UK economy requires a degree. So that's why sometimes it's worth uh, in making the investment. And of course, the earning potential of graduates is significant. Uh, in the course of your lifetime, a graduate would earn approximately around £120,000 more than a, a non-graduate. And if you go on to do a master's degree, this is a further £60,000 in the course of your lifetime. So there is very much a premium uh, to, to becoming a graduate. But also it's about personal development. You know, if you haven't yet thought about what you want to do in work, Coming to university gives you the opportunity to think more about that. It exposes you to lots of different experiences as well. It will, you have the chances of volunteering, doing work in, as in, in the courses in the way that I've described. And that may suddenly lead you into a particular vocation, into a particular profession. It is very much an investment. You know, I, I, you know, I know about it having seen my, my own uh, kids think about, is it worth, is it, worth it? Uh, I think they, my son who has graduated, now believes that it is worth it as he begins to accelerate through his own career choices on graduation. It is a big decision, but, it, but it's, that's why it's so important that you think long and hard about the course and about the type of university you want to go to, to make sure you're making the right investment choice. A little word about our graduates. Our graduates go on into many areas. Uh, for example, uh, because of the professional focus of many of our courses, many of our graduates go on into those professions, whether it's law, nursing, teaching, uh, uh, quantity surveying, accountancy, because there's a direct route into those professions as a result of doing a professional related degree. Of course, there are other degrees uh, which are more general. Many occupations just require a more general degree, but we ensure that those graduates have the relevant skills and the capabilities to move on. And they're moving into uh, organizations such as Land Rover, Rolls-Royce, uh, Bentley, British Gas, Hewlett-Packard, Burberry, Channel 4, the civil service, the criminal justice system, teaching, health, a very broad range of occupations. Others are much more into becoming self-employed. We have self-employed designers, artists, business, small businesses, again acquired through the entrepreneurial skills that we provide people. And of course a number go on to postgraduate study as well doing masters and so on. Now we found last year that 85 percent of our students, of our graduates, went on uh, within six months into work or to uh, further study. And moreover, we're now one of the top 30 universities in the UK for students entering graduate level uh, employment. And that's quite crucial given what you have studied. So that's very much a little bit of a, an overview uh, of the university. Uh, it's important that you use this day uh, to the maximum. So ask as many questions as possible 
uh, in the sessions that you attend, the subject sessions in particular, they'll be describing about the courses. Uh, you'll see lots of uh, people with uh, bright yellow t-shirts or probably uh, under very dark fleece jackets today because it's so cold. And there are many of our students. There are student ambassadors. Talk to them. Ask them what it's really like to study here, uh, to be part of uh, Birmingham City University. Uh, and they're offering some specialist advice throughout the whole day. It's important that you have all of your questions answered and you find out enough about the university. That's all I wanted to say because I think it's much more important that you hear what, it's, what life is actually like being a student. And so I'd like to introduce you to Emily Cooper, who is a final year student here. She's been studying psychology and she'll say a bit more about what it's like being a student. Emily. Hi everybody, I'm Emily, thank you. Um, really I was just here just to tell you about my experiences that I've had at Birmingham City University and hopefully through the slide show the opportunities that I've been given by being a student here. So firstly just to introduce how I got here, now I understand that I'm sure many of you have come from lots of different back backgrounds and you don't necessarily all take the traditional A-level route. But how I got here was obviously doing my GCSEs, AS and A-levels. Now, a lot of you will probably be sat here as like year 12, year 13 students. And I remember going and doing my GCSEs and moving into my A-level studies and being like, oh my God, this is the biggest jump I have ever done. The difference between studying for your GCSEs and doing your A-levels was an absolute nightmare. It was so stressful. But it just shows that sometimes that hard work really does pay off because now I'm here, I'm in my third year, I'm still alive, I've still made it this far and it actually was all worth it in the end and you can look back and smile and think, okay, I had to grip my teeth and bear it, but it really was worth it in the end. And actually what was quite interesting was in my AS level results, I originally got a D in my textiles and I had the opportunity to retake it and bump it up again and into a B, which actually helped me get into university in the first place. It's really just show that if you really do sit down and put the hard work and effort in, it really is worth it in the end. Now, I, like I said, there's lots of different routes to get into university. They aren't all the traditional one. And I actually took a gap year in between finishing my A-level studies and then coming to university. And it was actually one of the best things I ever did. Now I deferred my year so I'm sure you've either been or are going through the UCAS process at the moment and it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, now because I had deferred my year which has actually meant that I had held my place for the year after. So whilst I had my gap year I knew that in the September I was still secured a place on my psychology degree. Now by going into the world of work for a year, in which I had two professions, I worked as a letting specialist in Birmingham and also worked in retail, in which I got lots of transferable skills and made quite a lot of connections and networks in the world of work, which I always think is a fantastic thing to do. I came and moved to the city and I rented a flat and lived on my own and it was a real experience. Going and having that job and working for the year really has kept me motivated to come to university and every day I look back and think I'm doing this for a purpose, I'm doing this for a reason because I want a career in psychology. Just as the Vice Chancellor said there are numerous academic um, roles that you can go into in which you do need a degree and psychology is one of them and it really did show me that university was where I wanted to be. So because of doing my gap year I just thought I can't work nine to five anymore, I need to study, I need to be academically stimulated it just all clicked into place and I came to university in the September of 2010 and yes I was a year older um, than the traditional you know 18 year old but genuinely that made no difference and a little fact for you there's even a grandma on my psychology degree course so the fact that I was a year older in comparison to being 35 years older it really didn't make a difference we were all there with a common aim and a common interest and that was to learn psychology, the age difference just didn't make a difference. So there's always different ways of considering how you are going to get here because it's what's right for you. Now just some of the personal opportunities that I've been given at Birmingham City University, I won't bore you with all of them, but the fact that I can say I won't bore you with all of them is, just shows how many I've actually had from being here. Now um, just to mention a couple of them, 
I actually have written a chapter of a book with the Dean of my faculty, which goes on sale in Amazon in April. Now, I'm not trying to sell it, I don't get commission or anything for it, but it really does go on sale in Amazon. And to be able to say that I've gone and done that with the Dean of my faculty, wrote, wrote it in collaboration with her, is something that I can have on my CV, CV that companies are going to go, oh, that's interesting, something to talk about in the interview process. Um, I've also been a faculty rep for three years, which means that you give your cohort, your year group, a voice. So I, um, I represent my year in three um, yearly meetings with the academic members of staff on my course. And it actually puts me in a really, really positive light with the academic members of staff because they're the ones that are going to be writing a reference for your uh, graduate jobs, your careers, your going into doing your masters and further study. Now, they can write a really generic reference, you know, Emily turns up on time to class, you know, she, she is an engaged student. But if they know you, they can say, Emily's actually been a faculty rep for three years, she's been a course rep for three years, she does this, she does that. So the employers or the master's um, admissions office are going to go, they really, you know, this professor of psychology really knows this student, she must be engaged in the overall university life. Um, I've also been a faculty rep for two years on the student advisory board in which I speak directly with the dean and really do get things um, implemented into um, the university life as a whole. I was also nominated for an extra mile award. Now this is due to me being engaged in so many other different activities. But what's quite interesting is, I'm sure some of you will be thinking, well surely if she's doing all of these other things, it actually can sometimes take away from the academic studies that she's doing. That is not the case at all. We have actually found research that shows students that are more academic, um, uh, sorry, that are more engaged actually have higher academic results. And I'm not saying that it's a consequence of being involved in the other things, but I'm actually predicted a first in psychology, yet I can still say that I've done all of these things juggling with that. And I know you sometimes have to learn how to juggle, but it really is worth it because I'll be able to go on to my CV and say, God, I've got too much stuff to have on here. Let's take some of that out. Let's take some of that out. Rather than thinking, God, I've got to make up a job to be able to fill this piece of paper. There's something that's actually going to be on there that I can then have a conversation with interviewers about. Then I was also, um, I've been a peer mentor for Year 12 students in which we talked about the, the process and the jump between GCSEs and A-levels and I've also been an, well I am, I am also an academic mentor for the university for first and second year psychology students and coincidentally from my engagement that I had with my, doing my peer mentor, um, I won Birmingham City Mentor of the Year and also Mentor of the Year for the West Midlands which is brilliant because I got £100 Amazon voucher which went towards dissertation books. Um, and just in addition to some of these extra things, UCAS TV came and did some recording in the university and they interviewed me and were asking, you know, what advice would you give to students in your position, you know, here for you guys today? And I was saying, when you read prospectuses, you look at these people, they've picked, they must find models, they can't be real students, because real students don't look like the ones that are on the front of the prospectuses. They've picked the greenest lawns they can possibly find, they found the sunniest day they can possibly have of the year, and they've taken loads of pictures. Now, that isn't a true representation of the course. If you're here on a day when you feel like your fingers are going to drop off because it is so cold, and yet as student ambassadors, we are here representing our university because we have such pride in the institution. That's when you know that you love your university and you really do engage with Birmingham City University as a whole, not just the academic, but as the lifelong learning that comes with it. Um, and go and have lunch in the cafeteria because that makes a big difference as well. Now, just some helpful kind of hints and tips on getting here if you've not gone through the UCAS process or are going through it at the moment. Now, one of the th first thing I'd advise is come to an open day. Well, well done, you've ticked that off your list, you're here, so you've made it this far. Um, work really hard at your A-levels. It's a real hard slog, but you will get there in the end and it will all be worth it. For that, I can guarantee, like I said, third year, still alive, it'll be worth it in the end. When you're here today, 
take advantage of us in the highlighted yellow fashion statements that we've got on today and they all have student ambassador on the back which is lovely um, take advantage of speaking to us and getting the questions across that you want talk to the academic members of staff get the layouts of the course talk to us we know where the cheapest beer is so you know talk to me outside if you want to know where that is coming from hair of the dog pub over the road now your teachers at school or at college, they're the experts in putting together your UCAS personal statements, they're going to be there writing your, they're writing your references. Be proactive, what else can you do? Can you find workshops? Can you go over the summer when you finish your AS or A-levels, go and um, do some extra volunteering, you know if you're wanting to try and get onto teacher training courses, see if you can volunteer for a week in a school. Take, be proactive with that extra time that you have on your hands, it's only going to make your CV better if you're in a position where you're not quite sure with university or a job, it's only going to build you as a more wholesome and well-rounded person. Um, and Enjoy being, at, when you're actually, so helpful hints when you're actually here, enjoy being at university because there's a saying where they say, the situation is common but the experience is unique and I know lots of my friends at university and they go to lectures, go to seminars and go home. Now, they've experienced university life, and that is where the unique um, experience comes from, but I know that I have made the most of every single millisecond of being here. And for that, I can look back at BCU and really thank them for the transferable skills I can now offer the world of work because of the opportunities that they've given to me. Go and have a look at the societies. I know the student unions have got um, a talk on today talking about the societies and stuff that they've got on. Um, now there really is a brilliant society called the Hide and Seek Society. They wear brightly coloured t-shirts and play hide and seek around the ball ring. Get involved in that, that's really good fun. Um, think about what you spend your money on because when you um, get your student, your student loan in September, you like put your card in the bank machine and you think, oh my god there's a thousand pound in there. Don't go and blow it on a plasma screen TV like my friend did because he ate pot noodles for like ten weeks because he couldn't afford anything else. He had a lovely telly, we all went around and watched cinema nights at his house but you had no food and you get sick of providing your own pizza when you go to somebody else's house. Um, and then become a student ambassador like I am and like all the other students wearing the yellow t-shirts are today because we're the people that are proud of our university, that are engaged and really are willing to answer any questions that you've got. Genuinely, we want to put your mind at ease today and if you've got any you know, pending questions, please for some reason I just hang about, so come and find me, come and find any of you, we can always signpost you in the right direction um, and just enjoy the rest of your day here at PCU. Thank you. No, thank, thanks Emily. As you can see Emily is a, a, a great example of the, how you can maximise the opportunity when you're at university. It's a bit, some ways like joining a health club or a sports club. You get all of the facilities, but you only get out what you put in. And Emily's an example of how you can get so much out of the very opportunities. Enjoy the day, but keep asking all the questions.